In this video, I want to talk to you about where things went in Audacity. As Audacity upgraded to 3.6.0 and beyond, a lot of the things on the user interface that used to be there aren't there anymore. They've either disappeared or they've been moved behind something else. So I want to show you where some of those are today in this video. Hey friends, Mike Adams here with Learn Audacity. With the recent upgrades in Audacity, some of the elements that used to be present in the user interface appear to be gone, but they're not really gone, they've just been moved. So let's take a look at where they've been moved to. To start, I'm going to make a quick recording. Let's go to my audio setup button and let's make sure that my recording device is set to my Rodecaster Duo. It is, so we're good there out of here. The monitoring level looks pretty good. So I'm going to press record and let's just lay some audio down here so that we have something to reference to, something to look at with our track, with our waveform, so that we have a track in it. I'm going to press the space bar to stop recording and there's our track. Now I'm going to skip back to the beginning so that we can take a better look at this. Now, you'll remember that in previous versions of Audacity, we had a select button. Remember, it was down here in the uh, track control panel. That select button is gone. We also had information about the sample rate and the bit depth. That information is no longer there either. But it is. It's still there. It's just hidden away. If I take my mouse and I hover over these three dots here, it'll bring up a little tool tip, and it will tell you that I can open a menu there. So if I click on that menu, it gives me the option now to rename the track here. It tells me I'm in waveform view. And if I scroll down to format, it tells me the format that I'm in and the bit depth that I'm recording in. So that information is still here. It's just hidden in this other menu. I can also change the wave color here, rename the track. I can go to multi-view, spectrogram view. All of that stuff is in this menu now. But the select button is gone, and we really don't need it. Because if we just click in the track control panel, we select the entire wave or the entire track. So that little mystery is solved. Now, we used to be able to pin the control head or the playhead. There used to be an icon up here in the top left corner where we could get to our playhead. Well, it's not there anymore, but it kind of is. If I click on this, and by clicking continuous scrolling, I have, in essence, pinned the playhead. So if you're one who likes to pin the playhead and you're wondering where that option went, there it is. It's now called continuous scrolling. That doesn't seem very intuitive to me, but no one asked my opinion, and there it is. Continuous scrolling is now pinning the playhead. Also, there's been a lot of confusion concerning a couple of the new effects within Audacity. If I go up to the effects drop-down menu, and I go to volume and compression, and I bring up the limiter, you can see that the interface with the limiter has totally changed. I have completely different options. And this has caused a lot of problems for people who use macros and who have a limiter set up in their macro because it no longer works correctly. I'm going to cancel out of here real quick. And I'm going to come back up to the effect drop down menu. And I come back down to volume and compressor and compression. If I click on the compressor, it's changed as well. And so if you have the compressor set up, the old compressor set up in your macro, it's not going to function correctly because the parameters are different now. But Audacity brought back the legacy compressor and the legacy limiter. Let me show you where those are. Let's come back up to the effect drop down menu, and this time let's go to legacy. And here you'll see we have the legacy compressor and the legacy limiter. This is where you can get to those two things. So if I open up the legacy compressor, it's going to look more familiar to you if this is what you're used to using. So it's still here. It's just been moved. Same with the limiter. So if I cancel out of here and I go back up to effects and I go down to legacy and I open up the legacy limiter, this is what we're used to seeing. It's still there. It's just been moved in favor of the new compressor and the new limiter, which also function in real time or as real time effects. So I'm going to cancel out of here. Another feature that has been changed, it's actually been in Audacity for a while, but in case you're unaware of it, 
we now have a loop button. We can set a loop here in the transport toolbar. So if I have a section of the waveform selected and I click on loop, you'll see that it puts brackets around that section. Now, if I go through and I play that section, it will just continue to loop through it until I tell it not to. So let's try this. Something to look at with our track, something to reference to, something to look at with our track, something to reference to. And so you can see there that that's a quick way to set the loop. Now I can come up here into this section where I've got a loop, and on a Mac, I'm pressing control and clicking. I can clear the loop altogether, and I'm back to normal. So that's how you loop a section of audio now. It's part of the transport toolbar. Like I said, it's been there for a while. I don't remember the version that first gave us that, but it's been there for a while. Also, let me show you this. If I come over to the effect button in the control header and I click on it to add real-time effects, we now have that master track down there at the bottom and I can add effects in the master track as well as in the track that I'm working on. I personally put a limiter in that master track and that's pretty much all I do with it. Because again, I don't do music, and the audio that I do do is pretty straightforward. But that's where you can add effects to your master track, which then those effects affect every track within your project. And when you export your project to an MP3 or a Wave or whatever you're doing with it, the effects in that master track will be applied to the entire project. So hey, that's all I've got for you in this video. I'll let you go for now. And until next time, y'all take care.